This is a crash course on HCI and IBP using flat files brought to you by SCM Connections. The prerequisites for this course are to understand the IBP SNOP basics. This is useful to understand where the data is actually going and the requirements of that data. The best way to do that is to go on YouTube and search for a selection of videos titled SAP IBP SNOP in 30 minutes. There's also our uh, SEM Connections website with various blogs and webinars on the various aspects of IBP. And of course, there's always SAP uh, websites and other information on the internet. The other prerequisite is to have HCI set up. It's, it's not a requirement, but it's certainly useful to practice and use the skills that are presented in this video. Best way to do that is probably to go to scn.sap.com for more information. So in 15 minutes, uh, which I hope is the length of this video, you'll be able to understand the HCI basics. That includes the terminology, basic configuration, and what it actually looks like. And then also know how to load a flat file into IBP using HCI. That includes setting up a data source and project, as well as several tasks and data flows. So this slide is the process steps required to actually set up HCI for the first time and then also for individual projects what needs to be done to keep this video short we're not going to show how to download and install the agent nor configure it do that in a separate video and we also won't show how to optimize um, a data process and, and move it into production but what we will do is all those other boxes so we'll be creating a data source and importing that metadata then we'll be planning the actual data project We'll have to create a project, um, create several tasks and data flows, and then also test it. So this is actually the flat file brought up in Notepad because it's a common separated um, file. Um, it's kind of hard to read, so I did drop it into Excel with one slight problem, which was the fact that in Excel it takes that it took that product ID and um, reformatted it so that's not actually a valid SKU or product ID number. But what you can see is there was a primary key, there was a uh, customer ID and customer name, product ID, product name, and then location ID and location name. There was also weekly buckets and as well as a consensus demand forecast. So there will be uh, multiple rows for the same product material. Um, the unique combination is the key for this is going to be customer product location and week. Um, so, so what I'm trying to show in this slide is that we have a source file and we're going to take certain fields from that source file, not all of them, maybe do some transformation to them and then put them into IBP SNOP. Specifically, we're going to do the, the first task is going to be to take that product ID, that SKU and SKU description I showed you, and convert that and just take that value, um, group by, so I have a unique one row for every unique product and description combination, and then also then populate that as master data into IBP SNOP as the product ID and product description. Uh, I'm also going to do the same thing for customer and the same thing for location. And then finally at the end I'll take that transactional data and go by SKU and um, customer and weekly buckets and transform that data because the key figure date as is currently bucket is not um, compatible with IBP SNOP. It needs to be, the format needs to change. And so that'll be an example. That last data flow is going to be an example of transactional data. And some of you may be asking, well, why are you doing that? Why wouldn't you just pull the data from SAP? And most people probably would be doing that or ECC system. The point to this, though, is we use this tool because it's nice to have just a flat file we get from a client, and they want to see their data pretty quickly as a kind of proof of concept for IBP. And this allows us to just take a very basic product customer location, populate that master data that makes sense to them, along with the consumer uh, consensus demand and then they're ready to go and they can see and play around the tool and it makes sense for them. The other thing that's important about this um, slide, which you'll probably come back to and refer to, is is the fact that it actually, you can link up now what HCI needs and the terminology for HCI. So specifically, the um, consensus the, the consensus demand file, that file that I just showed you, is actually the data source. 
Okay, and then when we talk about a project in HCI, we're talking about the whole thing. So taking that initial file and putting it into multiple locations in IBPS and OP. From a task perspective, we'll have actually four, and the task is taking from one file and going to another. Okay, so that's more of a what. So tasks one, two, three, four, and then there's also data flows, and there's going to be four of those, and that's more of the how. So not only am I taking it from the source file, but how, what am I doing? Am I transforming it and applying any transformation rules to it? So the first step is actually to get into HCI. And uh, for, those of you don't know, for those of you who don't know, this is a web-based application. Uh, you have a very specific link up above that you get when you're installing your application, and it'll prompt you for a logon. Um, and again, outside the scope, it, it's, it's pretty straightforward. There's a uh, dashboard that comes up, but the two main areas that we're going to be working in are uh, data stores and projects, which we'll come to in a second. You can also go to Getting Started, which has the uh, process flow that you're looking at, as well as there's some decent videos out there to, to help you bring you up to speed. So the first thing we need to do is create a data store, which is going to be that, that file that I showed you. In order to do that, we need to go to HCI and click on data stores at the top. We, we may land initially on dashboard, but you need to go to data stores. And really, it's pretty straightforward. You uh, hit the little plus button here, and you have to fill in a couple fields. Uh, in this case, I'm calling it SNOP underscore method 002 and you can put some description of what the file is which is consensus demand at product slash customer slash location slash weekly level for client ABC and then you'll also need to change the type to file format group you'll see the selections change the root directory uh, is where the file is actually going to be sitting and this will probably be your first potential mistake so make sure that uh, this is the location on the agent for HCI where you will be placing that file not the name of the file but just the root directory uh, from there you just have to hit save and you've completed step one of creating your data source So the next step is to import the object metadata and that basically means you need to tell or describe the data source and data store and tell it exactly what format and the fields what are what are they exactly. So in order to do that, you go back to your data store screen and you make sure you're on the data store that you just created, which in this case is SOP method 2. And I'm under the file format. There's a configuration option where if I realize I need to change the root directory or something like that, that's where I could change it. But here under file formats, I can select uh, create the file format from scratch. So I do have one option of just typing in, you know, PRID, product ID, do that all manually, but I'm too lazy for that. And so I decided to do it through XML. And in this case, uh, I took that file, that ex, um, CSV file, and I created an XML schema. Again, if you need help, um, lots of resources on the web on how to do that. But you create an Excel schema, um, and I'm going to call it SOP method 002 schema. And I'm going to put a description I can. But the path, I'm going to look for that. Um, XSD file. So I've created this uh, XML schema file and put it on my local drive. This is the case where I just need a local file. I need to put it on the HCI server. And it's going to click OK. It's going to think about it, for example, and it's gonna, for a little bit. And it's going to come back and say, hey, which root name do you actually need to use? I need to use the uh, name of the file itself. Um, and then after I hit OK, it's going to populate all of these values already in there and um, we'll get to a second why the data type is 255 but I mean essentially that saves you a lot of time especially if you have a huge file and you don't want to type it in manually uh, it's automatically saved and you're ready to go 
So the next step is to actually plan the project, think through what data flows you're going to have, how's the data going to actually be calculated, transformed, etc. We already got a taste of that in uh, a little earlier where I showed you this flat file was going to go into four different tasks, four different data flows. Again, we have the data source, the overall project, the four tasks, and the four data flows. The key here is that the master data will need to be loaded before the transactional data, and how's that all going to be organized. Again, this is a pretty simple example, so the planning shouldn't be too involved. So the next step is to create a actual project. Again, pretty straightforward in HCI. You go into the tool and you'll see at the top projects. We were in data stores. Now we want to go to projects and this is where it's not quite so obvious. You uh, over here in the upper right is a new project and I'm just going to call it YouTube demo. Uh, demo for YouTube and it didn't like my space so I need to Put an underscore there. Um, you have when you do create, it'll give you uh, two options to create and save and create a task, which is probably the normal way you do it. But for this demonstration purpose, I'm just going to do save and close. You're going to see that uh, the project shows up. That's all you got to do. So the add master for the transactional data. In order to do that, you go to your web interface where you just added that project YouTube demo and you select create task it's going to prompt you for a name and it needs to be unique across the entire instance not just the project so I put YT for YouTube uh, underscore MD for master data underscore product and this is going to be the product master data load from flat file method 002 into consumer planning area. And again, if you're familiar with SNOP, then you'll know what I'm talking about. It's not too confusing. There is a consumer planning area, which I'll show you here in a second. I'm not going to use a template because this is a file of my own making. And it, the, when I go next, the next, it's going to ask me for the connect source. In this case, it's going to be the SNOP method 2 file. Uh, you can see the detail of, of that data source when we set it up, but there's no additional information you need to add. You click next and go to, and it's asking you for the connection target. In this case, it's IBP consumer. You may be asking where did that come from, how did that get set up. I don't remember setting that up as a data source, but that was done as part of the HCI setup with uh, telling that you have an IBP SNOP system. So that's just one of the planning areas. There's two other planning areas in our SNOP system right now, SAP2 and SCM SAP2. Again, some detailed information down here, but nothing you need to change and you can click save. Similar to the project, there was two options. Basically save and move on to the next step, which is to define data flows or just save and close. In this particular case, I'm just going to do save and close. So you can see under project, that new task is there, YTMD product. I did do a bait and switch on you a little bit. I added in the background earlier the two additional master data tasks and the transactional data. Uh, for that planning level product customer, for those familiar with SNOP, you know that there's planning levels inside each planning area and the consensus demand is at the product customer level in this case. So I wanted to have a task that loaded that consensus demand figure. And that's about it as far as tasks. Here. So the next step is to put in the data flows and in this case we're going to have four, three for the master data and one for the transactional data. In order to do that, you go back to your project, YouTube demo, and go under the actual task. From there, you're going to edit this task. And you'll see on the top where we have the details and the connections, uh, we're going to do the data flows. And in this case, we're going to be adding a data target, uh, add target object. And in this case, since we already told it that we're using the consumer planning area came up with a list of all the objects of the consumer um, planning area and in this case we're going to be using that C1 product. This is where knowing a little bit about SNOP comes in handy. So you select that and uh, you create the data flow. You can name it something like method 002 consumer product and I'm sure Yale Gates will have a better naming standard than I will. 
and it'll come up with a uh, someone who's familiar with ETL's uh, standard tool. There's a couple things we're going to do here. One is I'm going to drag in a. What you can see here is this is the actual destination in the target query. This is uh, first thing I'm going to do is bring in a source file, and uh, it's going to prompt me and says which one, and it's going to be that imp source file that I already told it. And that is the first and only place you'd actually tell it the name of the file uh, that you want to load. In this case, I need to uh, change that name. I need to change that file name to snop underscore method 002.csv. Uh, that's the actual file sitting on the agent, HCI agent, that I want to have load and click OK. It's going to come up with the source file being here. And Before I go much too much further, I also want to add one more thing and that's going to be the aggregation. Again, from to jump back to a prior slide, uh, you could see that we had for the data flows, we had an aggregation in the in the middle there where we wanted to have just one row for each unique product. So that's what the aggregation is going to be for. I'm going to use, uh, I just need to do some basic connect the dots between these. And you're going to see if I double click on the aggregation, it's going to pop up a screen. It's going to say, okay, what do you want to aggregate? Well, in this case, I want to drag over the product ID and the product description. That's what I want to aggregate. And I want to close that. And then when I click on the target query, it's going to say, okay, well, you have on the one side you have the product and the product description. What do you want to map them to? This is where, if you had the same names of the columns, it would make it a lot easier. But in this particular case, they don't match, so you have to manually drag them. And let me, I did this pretty quickly, but again, if you're familiar with SNOP and with the standard product master data, you'll know that. In addition to just the product ID and the product description, there's a whole bunch of attributes that are in there, and I'm just going to ignore those for right now. The only ones I'm really interested in is the product ID and product description. If uh, a client, for example, wanted to add attributes later, they could do that within the SNOP tool, but at least the basic product ID, product name is already there. From that, you're going to hit close. It's going to come back up, and you're going to see uh, everything done there, which is good and you're going to click done. There's one more activity that needs to be done for this data flow and that is to actually put in the global variables that are needed for uh, this data flow. Um, I'm going to go put those in really quickly and then come back. The, um, there's a specific OSS noted and probably with each version that the global variables will be different. So if you just hold on a second I'll populate those. So you can see that I added the global variables in this particular case for this release. I mean don't count on this being right by the time you're watching this video but in this particular release there were five variables that were needed. Uh, planning area, time profile, scenario, batch command, load date. If you're familiar with loading a flat file through the web interface some of these uh, will make sense to you. You may be asking yourself well I thought you already told it that you wanted to use the consumer planning area and a little nuance for SNOP for those of you who aren't aware is that you know that master data is could go across multiple planning areas it just so happened that it would it was following a naming convention where the master data was kept unique so you do need to call out specifically what planning area you want to load um, for this to work the time profile and the scenario um, and then obviously batch command is insert update because you're actually adding data and the system data is the load date At this point it would be good to click on validate and just see how the system actually likes your data flow. And uh, so you click validate on this screen, wait a little bit, and it'll come up with some warnings. And the reason why is because there's a whole host of fields on the master data product in the um, in SNOP that I'm not populating. And so it's giving you a warning, but but nothing is serious. So we're good to go to actually complete that data flow. So the last step is to actually test to make sure that this, these data flows worked. In order to do that, you'll want to run the actual data flow. And to do that, you select the, 
the line. There's there's agents, of course, and there's nuances to it. But essentially, the simplest way is just to select the uh, task that you want to have run, and you select Run Now, and then hit OK. The program will be started in the background, and you can click up here and go to View History, and you can see that that last job is running. Um, so I'm going to give it a few seconds to let it run, and then come back and show you what the uh, messages were. So you can see that the job success completed successfully and the trace, monitor, and error logs are all there. You can also, there's several ways obviously to check to make sure that the data was successfully loaded in whatever testing methodology you have. In my case, all I'm going to do is I just ran into uh, IBP very quickly and did a, um, here, let me show you in case you're not familiar. All I did was I brought up the mass master data for the product. Um, and hit edit and this was the result whoops this was the result that came up so you can see that the data was successfully loaded so that was the last step for this video successfully testing the data probably one thing that I went through very quickly was and the only difference probably was the was down here on the transform I'll do that for another video because I was a little bit over time and uh, I didn't want to I wanted to do justice to the transformation and how that works because I think that's going to be a common trick that people are going to want to do so other than that that takes it for the video please leave comments below